Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Fargo police say their job is to catch people breaking the laws, and that's what they attempted to do last night in a South Fargo neighborhood. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Police set up a perimeter in a large area that extended from 13th Avenue South to the interstate and from 25th Street to University after a man hit a mailbox with a stolen car, then ran into the neighborhood. Fargo police say they were unable to locate the man, and many of you asked, why was there such a large area and manhunt over a stolen car? Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop talked with police about how each situation is different, and ultimately they just want to catch the people who are breaking the law. Red and blue flashing lights, police cars on almost every corner, a lot of resources over the driver of a stolen car that hit a mailbox. Fargo police say they don't typically pursue over stolen vehicles, but last night's incident brought concern to the officers. Uh, and also given the temperatures, uh, the information we had is that the suspect fled on foot and not knowing if the person had any injuries. The sergeant and patrol supervisors felt it was in the best interest to utilize a, uh, a canine. Anderson says they also wanted to see if the man was responsible for stealing the vehicle. He says a canine tracked the suspect for a while, but then lost it. But why such a large perimeter? Anderson says it's standard protocol for when using police dogs. So, uh, as time passed from the initial call, the, uh, the officer who did the canine track uh, helped make recommendations as far as how big the perimeter would be. Neighbor Mike Emerson says at first he was freaked out to see all the police, but was fine after knowing the public was not in danger. I felt good. I'm glad that they're watching the neighborhood and everything. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see them go try to go after them, get them. Yeah. Fargo police say they understand the anxiety that searches can bring to a neighborhood, so they try to be transparent. Um, there's a perception of maybe, uh, uh, maybe we might go a little bit overboard at times, but there is a reason, good reason for it, uh, such as the perimeter last night. There might be, you know, some speculation of why the perimeter was so big or why the perimeter was even needed at all. And as I alluded to earlier, that, you know, some of that is best practices, some of that is officer safety, some of that is to keep the general public out of the area. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Police say during this time of year, they typically see an increase in stolen vehicles because people are leaving them running. This is the second search for someone running from police in just two weeks. Earlier this month, Moorhead police say an officer tried to stop this man, John Hamry, for making an illegal turn. But Hamry took off on a high-speed chase and his car was later found abandoned in South Fargo. Hamry has been arrested and is in the Cass County Jail. Some new information now. The Wilkin County Sheriff's Office released two surveillance pictures of what they say could be the suspected vehicle used in an armed bank robbery last week. Here's a look at some of the pictures. The sheriff says they're looking for this dark SUV, possibly blue, and believe it could be a Ford Expedition from the mid-2000s. The sheriff says a witness account led them to this vehicle. Investigators followed up and found the vehicle on video, leaving Roth say at the time of the robbery. It happened just before 1.30 last Tuesday at the Farmer's State Bank in Roth say. Officers say the man pointed a gun at the teller and demanded money. He then took off in a nearby vehicle. The sheriff says they are looking for a white man. You can see in these surveillance photos, he was wearing a mask and a dark hooded sweatshirt with stripes on the front. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Wilkin County Sheriff's Office. Well, the snow rolled through Fargo today, dumping a good amount kind of quickly, but also along with some wind. Will that last into tonight? Let's find out with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch? Well, we will be uh, well traveling through a few flanks tonight in the Red River Valley as this little weather wiggle works its way off to the east. Now we're seeing the heavier of the bands move into westernmost Minnesota as this whole band is moving off to the east at about 30 miles per hour. It's now in central Becker County, so Otter Tail's starting to see that slippery uh, few flakes make their way in as well. Now another round moving into Ada, and that area could be picking up a little bit more. Many areas picking up about a half of an inch or less of snowfall, but uh, the second round now moving through portions of Nor Norman County and western Polk County, all the way up towards Crookston seeing some snow. 
and a few flakes continuing to uh, reproduce themselves right near western Polk County and the East Grand Forks area. Steady temperatures tonight to slowly rising out west. Look at this. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And a wind from the south gusting to 25 or 30 miles per hour means it will be a little wind chilly. This is caused by a warm front, Stephanie. I'll have details on how warm we get, how long the warm weather sticks around, and we'll talk about any chances of snow the remainder of our week here in a few moments. But be careful. It is very slippery out yes, there. Yes, it is. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. Now you can stay up to date on all the latest weather conditions wherever you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team Weather app to get the latest weather conditions. Even follow the radar live. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. Two men were arrested in Grand Forks early this morning after stealing a vehicle, an ATM, and leading police on a chase overnight. UND police officers were called to the Hilton Garden Inn around 3 a.m. for a burglary. When officers arrived, they saw the men leaving and tried to stop the vehicle. The two men got out and ran. Both quickly were caught, though. Officers say Daniel Gagno and Jeffrey Kahn stole an ATM from inside the hotel and loaded it into a vehicle they stole from a business in Grand Forks County. Both are facing charges of burglary, theft of property, and refusing to halt. Kahn's also facing a DUI and drug charge. Police have identified the man who died from a suspected carbon monoxide poisoning while he was ice fishing. They say 34-year-old Jared Johnson from Akeley, Minnesota, died. Police say four men were overcome with carbon monoxide poisoning inside a fish house on Leech Lake on Sunday. Johnson was found dead at the scene. Another man still is in the hospital, and two others were treated and released. An investigation shows that propane devices may have caused unsafe levels of carbon monoxide. Also new to report now, Hightail Horse Ranch and Rescue in Holly, Minnesota, announced it will stop all rescue operations by the end of the month. A post on its Facebook page says, quote, Despite our best efforts, we are unable to gather enough support or assistance to continue to function. It goes on saying all the horses have been adopted and ends with a pledge to help other rescues across the area. We first told you about Hightail Rescue after we were contacted by a woman who said a horse that was donated to them died from what she says was lack of prop, proper care and rescue. Now, to read all the past stories on the full Facebook post, head to valleynewslive.com and then click on this story. And if you need help uncovering any fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline, 701-237-6576. Leave your tip and a member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work exposing the truth. The more you read, the more things you'll know. And the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Do those words sound familiar? They are from the famous author, Dr. Seuss, and they're more than appropriate as some young men are sharing their reading skills and underlining the importance of reading to a captive audience. The young men are members of the Fargo Force hockey team and their audience, first graders at Bennett Elementary. Robbie Bedoon is from Michigan and Hugo Reinhardt's from Sweden. As these 19-year-olds ride the bus from town to town for their next hockey game, they're prepping for the future, for college, and reading. I like to read books on like sports psychology. I'm pretty interested in that stuff, so I read a lot of stuff on that. I don't know what to read. Yeah, I try to read some. I try to study for the SAT for, to be able to go to college. Now, it wasn't all a lecture about the importance of reading. They shared with other first graders a little bit about playing hockey for the force and their lives and so on. And Reinhardt offered a mini lesson in his native tongue, Swedish. Sandwiches, pasta, a steak, no matter what you're craving. There are a few new restaurants you should know about and should eat at today. Well, the annual Dine to Donate event is today to help raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. Long-standing restaurants participating include Noodles & Company, Old Chicago, Usher's House, and Lone Star Steakhouse. Money raised will help fund special programs, research, and buy state-of-the-art equipment. We have loyalty all across the state, and we want to help our friends and family that are near and dear to us in this high-tech medical equipment, these specialized care programs that are at Sanford Children's. Those are really special, and it helps the kids get better faster. 
Last year, the event raised more than $6,000. Dine to Donate will be going on until the restaurants close tonight, so you still have some time. Well, there are